Welcome back to the second part of Restoring this Diamond Monster 3D2. This Voodoo 2 card was unfortunately installed in a system with a faulty power supply. And when the power supply blew up, it destroyed many of the memory chips of this card. And maybe something else, we'll figure that out today. But here you see two of the chips that just have a hole burned into the housing. In the last video I broke away some of the housing here because it was so cracked open that it was easy to expose the die. By the way, if you haven't seen the first part, I highly recommend to watch this if you want to know the story how I ended up here now. In the last video we had a short on these two pins that are here on the right. This is connected to the PCI slot to the 5 volt rail. And this most likely goes directly to the power supply. Now. Why did our memory chips blow up? Most likely, we have the memory chips connecting directly to these two pins here, or to all the 5 volt pins that come from the PCI slot, and therefore the memory chips are directly connected to the power supply. I'll put up the datasheet of those memory chips one more time, and if you remember, the corner pins are either ground or 5 volts. So let's figure out if our memory chips are connecting directly to the 5 volt line. Let me just check where is ground. I think ground is the top row if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so ground is here, then ground should also be here. So these two corner pins are ground. That means here and here should be the 5 volt line. So now let's measure the bottom row and... Both of them connect directly to these pins, which most likely are then on the motherboard routed directly to the power supply. So what could have happened in this power supply? I'm assuming that higher voltage somehow entered into the card and then to all the memory chips, which caused them to blow up. Maybe the 5 volt line was mixed with a 12 volt line. Maybe another component failed and shorted these two voltage lines and suddenly we had 12 volt on our PCI connector where normally should only be 5 volts. I'm not sure, but if you have any idea, let me know in the comments. But there is one more issue that is a little bit concerning, and this is this linear voltage regulator here in the corner. This most likely is responsible to power the 3DFX chips. And if I turn this card around, you will see here a small little burn mark. This is right in the vicinity of the linear voltage regulator, it is not directly under it. So I'm not sure, but it could be that there was a problem here as well. And to maybe get a little bit more insight, let's just see where this linear voltage regulator connects to. So I looked up the data sheet and this lower pin here, this is the adjust pin for adjusting the output voltage. The middle pin is voltage out and probably connects to all three 3DFX chips. And if we measure the tab, I think this is also connected to the middle pin. Yes. And finally, we have the top pin here, which is voltage in. And I'm suspecting that this also connects to our 5 volt line. Yes. So we have a direct connection, whatever messed up the memory chips, to this linear voltage regulator. So the question is, does this voltage regulator work? Um, if this card was plugged into the system while this other power supply failed, then I would assume that if it failed, it would already have damaged the 3DFX chips. So I'm inclined to leave this voltage regulator right now in place, but I will measure the voltage whenever we power on the system. I want to see what's going on. So why do I believe that the voltage regulator may still be in working condition? Well, first of all, if it failed, it probably killed all the 3DFX chips as well at the time when this other power supply failed. Let's assume there was a 12 volt issue and 12 volts enters the card and the memory chips start failing. They reduce the resistance between power and ground and therefore pulling the 5 volt line or 12 volts, what it was at that point, to zero which means there was maybe not enough time for the linear voltage regulator to fail. It may have taken time until these memory chips ended up like this, but maybe it was not enough to kill the linear voltage regulator. So for my first test, I will leave the card as is. I cleaned all the pads. I removed anything that I could think of would maybe cause an issue. 
So let's plug in the card and see if it boots. And then we will see if it makes sense to reinstall the memory chips. Before we go and try this card, I would like to thank today's video sponsor, PCBWay. I'm using their services for almost two years now and received countless PCBs. The quality PCBWay delivers is always top notch and every project I made so far works great. Except for the time when I messed up and designed a faulty memory module. After realizing my mistake, I sent an updated PCB for manufacturing and received the new PCBs within a couple of days. But PCB manufacturing is not the only service PCBWay offers to their customers. PCB assembly, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining are some of the other services PCBWay offers. Or browse through their shared project space where hobbyists and professionals share their work. Links are in the video description. So the Voodoo card is in the test system. I'm quite nervous now. This will be the first test trying to boot into DOS and uh, let's see what Mojo has to say. Oh. Okay, we have a boot. Let's go into DOS. Okay, while the system is up and running, let's also quickly check our voltage that we get from our voltage regulator. So this one here is voltage in and we are at 4.76 volts, okay. And what's the output voltage? 3.48. I think this is spot on. So that voltage regulator survived. I don't think we have any issues with this voltage regulator. That's great. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, I do have Mojo on this system already. And yes, I see Mojo here. So let's try Mojo. That's not good. Okay, signal is gone. Okay, let me try this one more time. What I have done now is I removed the pass-through cable and we try now only with the monitor connected to the 2D cord. So let's try Mojo one more time. <laughs> yes, there's an output. So what do we get here? Info for Voodoo board number zero. So it detects the card. That's already a very good sign. So what do we have? We have a few addresses. We have a good PCI device, vendor device ID, FBI revision two, FBI memory zero. Okay. Power on sense for FBI zero X2. TMU power on sense. Dead. Okay. I hope that is not the state of the card. But okay, what do we have? Okay, TMU revision 57005 and number of TMUs is the same. Yeah, I have seen this number on some forum posts before. It usually had something to do with disconnected FBI legs or TMU chips not being connected to the FBI chip. But I already refloat all the legs around the 3DFX chips, so I highly doubt that we have any issue with the connectivity between FBI and TMU connections. That's definitely not the case. I think I created one time an extended debugging file on this system as well. Let's just see if I can find this quickly. Yeah, this one looks... Yeah, this is the one. So what we do here is we enable additional debugging and we write the output into a file. And I think that is more or less it. Let's see what we get if we run this file and then run Mojo one more time. So it was 3DFX. Okay. And now Mojo one more time. Okay. I think you also get some additional information here. Let's see if we get our SST log file. Yes, we have an SSD one, so let's just open it in an editor. I think this is the easiest one. Okay, so what do we have here? Board and system one. 
Okay, that all looks normal, I think. Duck, I guess this is fine too. Resetting team use after clock change, okay. Setting up fast DRAM configuration. This is the last thing that happens and then we get errors. Okay, so could it be that a Voodoo 2 does not work if we have no memory at all on the board? I thought I saw a video once where somebody removed all the memory chips from a Voodoo 1 and it actually did render, you just don't get any textures. But I don't remember if it was just the texture memory. The problem is this Voodoo card had 24 memory chips. Of course I'm not gonna install all 24 chips to test the card because I could just equip it with 8 megabytes. That would save me at least 8 more memory chips that I don't have to install. But I wonder if I should just go ahead and install 8 memory chips for the FBI chip and see if we get a different output. What else do we have here? Yeah, they're all failing. So we have four retries, I guess. So there is retry. Yes, yeah, so it tries to do the same thing. Init fill device info. One, two, three, four. Error filling device info. So I'm hoping that this is because of missing memory on the FBI chip. If the Voodoo 2 is similar to the Voodoo 1, then it should at least give more information with the FBI memory. And even though there is no texture mapping memory, it should give us a different output. So let's do some soldering and repair those few pads that have been ripped off the PCB. So I decided to install only 2 megabytes of FBI memory for now. I just want to see if it's making a difference, if the card boots up, if we see some different output in Mojo. And I don't know if there might be another issue somewhere on the card. Maybe these memory chips will blow up and we have to start over, but I hope not. 
So let's power on. Okay, nothing bad happened. We have a picture. Nothing exploded, but let's see what we get in Mojo. Let's also set the 3DFX environment variables and Mojo. Yes! <laughs> okay, it's messed up, but the TMUs are reporting in. Ah, oh, that's crazy. I have no memory on this card except for the two megabytes of FBI memory. And it reports one megabyte only and uh, I, I guess I guess Mojo does not expect to have only two megabytes of FBI memory and nothing on the team use. That actually begs the question if we can run Tomb Raider now. The problem is I don't have the loop cable installed right now, so I will reboot the system, try it again and uh, see if Tomb Raider starts. So let's try Tomb Raider. Let's see. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. It is going to work. Hopefully. I mean, it looks promising. Very promising. Let's see if we have a frame counter. Yeah, okay, so there is nothing we can see here right now. Where is new game? This one? No. New game. Okay. I think this looks like a 3DFX display of Lara in the middle of nowhere. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Lara in the middle of nowhere. So if you really want to have a challenging game, play Tomb Raider with only two megabytes of FBI memory. Okay, so <laughs> I think so far things look really, really promising. I think now I will continue to solder the other two megabytes on the card and then we will install another two megabytes each for the TMUs. That should give us an eight megabyte model. And then we can finally test this card if it really works. That would be so awesome. Okay, now very briefly I installed the other two megabytes for the frame buffer chip and I'm going to test this quickly in the test system just to see how this Voodoo card behaves with different memory configurations. Usually a Voodoo 2 card always has 4 megabytes of frame buffer memory, so we saw what happened with only 2 megabytes. Now let's see what happens if we have 4 megabytes for the frame buffer, but nothing for the textures. The Voodoo is back in the test system, now with 4 megabytes of frame buffer memory, so now let's see what we get from Mojo. Nice, always good to see a successful boot. Okay, so... Uh, 3DFX, I want to also maybe quickly check what we get in the extended log now. Oh, Mojo. Okay, okay, we come back. Okay, so there is not much difference i think the memory is still not correctly addressed we see one megabyte of fbi memory and also each of the tmus has one megabyte displayed yeah that, that may be an issue with the tool itself but um, let's quickly check what we get in our uh, extended log file this one here Okay, so this one looks similar to what we had before. 
Okay, so we see some more information now. We see resetting uh, TMUs after clock change. This was there. Setting up fast DRAM configuration. This is where it stopped working. So then we have FBI config. I don't know what all this means, but we have FBI revision 2, TMU revision 1, number TMUs 2. So this is already good that it detected this. FBI memory 1. And also TMU0 and TMU1 also have each one megabyte only. Let's see if this changes once I add the other uh, memory chips to the board for the TMUs because TMUs still don't have any memory chips available. We have uh, the DAC listed here, SLI detect. But it looks like, so far, the card is working as expected. I guess now we have to see what happens when we add the texture memory. Okay, so I will add another 4 megabytes, 2 megabytes for each of the TMUs. I will not install everything yet, and uh, I believe the texture memory goes to the front of the card. The, usually in the 8 megabyte versions, the back of the card is not populated for the TMUs. So I will solder now 8 more memory chips for the TMUs, and then we will see what we get in Mojo. Hopefully, we will get a proper reporting then. So the Voodoo card is now in the test system with hopefully 8 megabytes of total video memory. And let's see if Mojo will detect the correct memory size now. Okay, so we got a boot. And... Moment of truth. Let's see. Come on. Huh. So TMU memory 2 megabytes and 2 megabytes is correct, but the FBI memory is not. FBI memory should be at 4 megabytes. Why is it 1 megabyte? That's not correct. Maybe I made a mistake with one of the memory chips, but let's see what Tomb Raider is doing now. We are definitely a big step closer to having this card work. Oh, that doesn't look good. It looks better than before, but clearly there's still... There is still something going on. What's going on? Are we running in 3DFX mode? I don't see a frame counter. I can enable and disable this somewhere, I think. Ha! Okay. So frame counter is there. That means this is 3DFX. But of course, this is not how Tomb Raider is supposed to look like. So... Ah, we are not yet done. Okay, so I think I have to go back to figure out what could be the reason for this. Is this a texture mapping issue or is this the frame buffer? Looks like the frame buffer, to be honest. Because it's just uh, the color that looks off. Okay, I will try one more thing. And uh, if that doesn't work, I will stop here. And maybe you can help me to figure out what's going on with this card. Where is the problem? Could it be the digital analog converter, which is also on the card and connected to the 5 volt rail that damaged the memory chips? Or could it be any other of those chips that are on the board? So if you have any experience with faulty Voodoo cards, let me know. 
What I've done now is I have added the other 8 memory chips on the back of the card. So now the Voodoo 2 is completely equipped with 12 megabytes again. I don't think there is any mechanism like resistors that can be used to specify if there are 8 or 12 megabytes installed on this diamond card. I just thought to give it a try. So if this doesn't work, then we have to see what is the issue. So again, the frame buffer chip only sees one megabyte so far. Before these two texture mapping units saw two megabytes, that was okay because I only sorted the front memory chips. Now we have the ones on the back as well. Each TMU should now have four megabytes. That would at least be something that's good to see. And uh, yeah, frame buffer, that's the problem right now. I already tested all the resistors and the resistor arrays, also checked the capacitors if there is any problem, a short or something, but there is nothing. I couldn't see any issues here. And I'm not sure if any of these chips could be affected. They both connect to the 5 volt line as well. But I think the digital to analog converter seems to be working, I think. I don't know if, if you have seen these pictures from before, like the discoloration. Is it from the DAC or is it from something else? I'm just I'm just confused with the FBI chip, with the frame buffer chip to see only one megabyte of memory. But let me try this card now. This should have 12 megabytes, but as it looks like, we have maybe now only 9, but I will only see this once I start Mojo. So yeah, let's uh, put this card in the test system and see what's going on. Okay, the Voodoo card is in the system and let's see what happens. Okay, picture. Okay, let's start with Windows. I unfortunately don't have a mouse installed, but that's okay. I'll be able to navigate through it with my keyboard. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I already had the diamond drivers one time installed. So let's just quickly see. Okay, system, device manager should be here. Yes, we have a Diamond Monster 3D2 Accelerator. So that's good. Uh, I think there is also the Diamond Control Panel. I think it's here. Yes. Okay, Diamond. Okay, looks, <laughs> looks promising. Where is this? I think it's in System Info. Ah, frame buffer memory, one megabyte, still. It only sees one megabyte. But we get our eight megabytes texture memory. Okay, so the TMU seem to be fine, but the frame buffer still has that issue that it only sees one megabyte instead of four. Well, I guess I have a nine megabyte Voodoo 2. That's a little bit unfortunate. Let's see if we can... Maybe run something like 3D Max. Oh. Ah, okay. Oh, well, that might be because of the drivers maybe, but yeah, I'm not surprised that it doesn't work. Let's try Tomb Raider in DOS. So let's try Tomb Raider in 3DFX mode. Yeah, this is the same as before. So yeah, this discoloration is weird. If you know what could cause this and why we see only one megabyte for the frame buffer chip, please let me know. I'm out of ideas. There is a little bit of a slowdown. So something is up here. That's it's a Pentium 200. That should be faster than this.
But yeah, I'm not sure if we can fix this. Maybe with your help, I will be able to find a solution. Let's quickly test Mojo one more time, but I'm assuming we see the same thing what we saw in Windows. Yeah, FBI memory, one megabyte. But everything else looks fine, so it would be a shame if we can't get that Voodoo 2 to work. So yeah, as I said many times, let me know if you have any idea what I could do and we will try it. The texture mapping units are there, that's good. They all have access to their dedicated 4 megabytes, that's also great. And we didn't see any texture corruption when we ran Tomb Raider right now, so that's a good thing. It's just the FBI memory, the frame buffer memory is not where it's supposed to be. Okay, so I guess this is almost the end of this video, but let's have a look one more time at the card and let's go through the options what we can do. Okay, so the frame buffer still sees only one megabyte and I don't know why. As I said before, it could be that maybe there is another problem on the card. Maybe we have 40 memory installed here. But we see 8 megabytes in total for the texture mapping units now, so each of them has access to 4, that is good. I double checked the solder spots on these memory chips, they look fine. I haven't gone through every single chip and see if a connection is uh, really there on the frame buffer chip, but I, I wouldn't know why not. The resistor arrays here seem to be fine, the solid joints seem to be okay. I don't know if maybe any of these chips could be the culprit for not seeing the entire memory here. If you know or have seen the video output that this Voodoo card produces and know what's the issue, please let me know in the comments because I'm running out of ideas. We're so close. Um, yeah, the only thing I can think of now is I will measure the pins of these memory chips. If that looks fine, then I will maybe just take off the front memory chips because I started with these four chips initially. And even then, the 3DFX chip only saw one megabyte. So I wonder if I take off these four chips and only leave the ones on the back, does it make a difference? Does it see also one megabyte only, or does it see more? That may be something that I could try. And the only other thing I can think of is to take off the 3DFX chip, but I really don't like to do this. I, I do have a donor board. And it has a frame buffer chip, but I don't know if you can see this very well. It, it got knocked on one side and it's completely bent. All the pins shifted to the left. So yeah, this would be one other thing we could try, but this is obviously a lot, a lot of work. I'm not sure if I want to do that. But we are really so close. I, I do not want to give up on this card. If you have any idea, please let me know in the comments or forward me to a link somewhere. Let me know where you find information that could work. So yeah, we will figure out what's wrong with this with this card. It's such a nice card. It's a revision A. I have other diamond cards here and maybe I even have another revision A. I want to set up an SLI setup at some point, but I don't have any cards that are identical. And there are drivers that allow you to match cards from different manufacturers, but I don't know, I just would like to have a matched pair. That would be really nice. Yeah, so let me know. I'm really looking forward to understand what could be the issue here. So yeah, so close, so close, but yet so far, this card is useless in this state. But we got quite far with this card. There were literally burned holes in the original memory chip. I would not have expected to even get there. I mean, this card is literally running 3DFX titles somehow. It rendered the 3DFX logo. And yeah, this is all I have for you. I hope you still enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching, for your time. And a big thank you to all my Patreons. 
I guess I will see all of you in part number three. Bye bye.